And welcome back. International firefighting teams from around the world have answered Israel's distress call to help battle the worst wildfire in the nation's history. The raging inferno has killed dozens, displaced thousands, and ravaged the country's most prized forest. The massive blaze continues to rampage through the Carmel Forest in northern Israel. Flames towering nearly 30 meters are threatening to enter the country's third largest city of Haifa. Planes and helicopters repeatedly swoop over the woodland, scooping up tons of water and dumping it on the flames below. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was deeply moved by the assistance his country is receiving. In addition to the solidarity, many of them have actually dispatched pilots, firefighters, uh, material crews. Uh, they're standing shoulder to shoulder with us uh, on the ground and in the skies uh, fighting this terrible fire. France is among the countries offering help, dispatching firefighting planes on a rotational basis. We will have two aircraft taking off now and we will have one more uh, this evening, a Dash 8. And we will have two more Canadairs taking off tomorrow morning. Anguished families began burying the 42 dead, most of whom were prison guards burned alive inside their bus. Pledging support is one thing, but witnessing the compassion firsthand spoke volumes. You came in the middle of the night uh, with full force, with reserve crews, with the best planes that uh, are available and you got into work right away. So I, I appreciate uh, the Prime Minister's and Greece's response to uh, this predicament of Israel. Many of the 15,000 evacuees describe their predicament as being grave and tragic, as they have no clue when they can go home or if they still have homes. Near Haifa's rare animal sanctuary, people scrambled to save gazelles and deer who were trapped as the scorching fire ran rampant. Police are now investigating reports that the fire may have been deliberately set.